Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the Fantasy 420, where today we are going to be continuing our fantasy football free agency winners and losers series with some 2019 tight end free agency winners. Today we're going to be discussing five tight ends who I believe were helped by the historic free agency period we just experienced in the NFL. Uh, obviously, there's still a lot of uh, offseason to go with preseason games, the draft, injuries, various other things, but we can draw some conclusions based on the movement that's been made so far on whose values have gone up and down. And uh, today I'm going to be starting at the number five name and ending at number one with number five being helped a little bit less than number one, yet still being helped a lot. And without further ado, let's move on to the list with number five being a combination of first round tight ends, TJ Hawkinson and Noah Fant. Obviously, we don't know where they're going to play as of right now. They are the first rookies I've mentioned on any of the winners or losers list, but I feel they're needed to be mentioned because tight end was such a wasteland last year in 2018. So while it is rare for rookie tight ends to break out on the fantasy football scene in particular, now is a better time than ever. Um, both are obviously first round talents being projected to go in the first or early second round. And it seems like half of the league is looking for a starting tight end right now. And if they landed in, let's say, New England, taking over for Gronkowski with uh, Buffalo, maybe just being the centerpiece or literally number one option on their offense. Packers, maybe they move Jimmy Graham to a blocker and uh, move forward with one of those younger guys as the athletic receiver. Who knows? I'm not even saying that it's likely that one or both of those guys will break out, but it's just a lot more possible because of the position and what has happened. It's low scoring, and last year it was really hard to find consistency anywhere other than Travis Kelsey, Zach Ertz, and uh, George Kittle. So if you didn't have one of those guys, even Eric Ebron was really hard to figure out which weeks he would go off on. So, And if one of those guys or both of them don't work out, we'll be right back here in 2020 with uh, the free agency winners video when uh, they let go of one of those older guys and they get to step up. So we'll be back next year. The next name we'll move on to with number four is Jared Cook. He finally had that 31-year-old breakout year that we were waiting for in Oakland when uh, nobody picked him. So we all got him as a free agent, uh, but we all bailed on him. So we're all going to be back on the train this year. He signed with the Saints, so leads us to believe it is a better offense and uh, team, but a much worse role. Obviously, once they traded Amari Cooper, you could argue he was the number one option on that offense, which is extremely rare and insanely valuable for a tight end. Obviously, if uh, he moves to the Saints, he's going to be, at best, number three behind Michael Thomas and Kamara, probably around four. So he has shot up draft boards since then. He is at number nine right now, and he's continuing to rise. That being said, I don't want everybody to go overboard. There is the new team factor. Um, Bree's not really looking as well uh, playing-wise at the end of last year. And he has a career of uh, disappointing in fantasy, so wouldn't shock the world if uh, his numbers did slide from last year a little bit. But I would definitely expect him to be somewhere around last year, maybe a little bit better, but not, like I said, not going tremendously overboard. I'm going to take a little sip of water. As you all know, I've been sick, and I don't want to stop the stream halfway through. Thank you all, everybody. The third name I'm going to go to is Austin Safarian Jenkins. You know it's a real wasteland of a position, like I said. When I'm putting ASJ on a fantasy football winner's list on any part of it, but 
it's undeniable. He did sign with the New England Patriots, and they have historically used the tight end probably more than any team in the league and definitely with more success than any team in the league. Rob Gronkowski's gone, and there is a gaping black hole in the position. I obviously love Edelman, but he is a not as small, sorry, not as big player, and he is 32 years old, so there is the possibility that he gets hurt. And past him, there's not much competition at the wide receiver position to hold ASJ down. He's also six feet, six inches tall, provides a fantastic red zone target. Obviously, I think uh, the Pats will get the miracle of TJ Hawkinson to fall in the draft of them or something. But if JSJ can hold the job, watch out. Um, He might actually... Uh, have a really decent fantasy year, be a top 10 option or so. So moving on, we're going to go to the number two name, which is Evan Ingram. Obviously, Odell Beckham is gone from the New York Giants. Uh, Evan Ingram is a former first round pick who the franchise loves, and they're going to have to have him step up for next year in some sort of capacity as they're losing a lot of talent and production on the offense. I will say I'm not in love with this. I uh, should expect Ingram to see more double teams as Tate and Sterling Shepard are more possession receivers, not burners who are going to take the cover off and allow Ingram to roam free. I do think he's going to be double teamed maybe more than anyone on that offense, and there's going to be some weeks where you're left disappointed. But historically, he's done better um, in his past two years without Odell Beckham. So the numbers would tend to disagree with my assertion. And it is his third year where third-year players on the offensive side of the ball tend to have a breakout season. So I do buy into him as number two in terms of improvement. I'm a little skeptical, but maybe I shouldn't be. Maybe we should just be all in for Evan Ingram. Finally... The one guy at number one who I am all in on, his name is Vance McDonald of the Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't care what you say. If you want to do Vance dance, take Vance to France, give him a lance, whatever it is, I just don't care. Rhyme it and pick him and put him on your fantasy football team. Uh, There's 200 targets gone in Antonio Brown, Le'Veon Bell, Jesse James, his backup is now leaving etc. He passed the eye test last season, one of the best uh, stiff arm slash plays in the league, and uh, just looked really good overall if you watch the games and he played in. It's his third season as a Pittsburgh Steeler, so he has that chemistry working with Big Ben, arguably more than anybody who's on that roster, and just another year in that offense, you would expect a little bit of a breakout coming. Honestly, he just had a perfect offseason of everything rolling for him. There's a lot of incentive to prove that he's one of the best tight ends in the league going into his next contract. And I just think that all systems go for Vance McDonald. No reason not to jump on the train and go ahead and pick him. So even if you're reaching a round or two, I'd go ahead and do it. And I've done it so far in my early best ball drafts. That being said, everybody, I appreciate you all listening to my videos always. And I'll be back tomorrow with another video. Take it easy and peace.